Hello, my name is Dan Boston. I live in Montreal, Canada, and I have a great passion for organic fruits and sustainability. Today is May 17, 2022. Two years ago, I published a video about several unheated greenhouses that I have built and tested over the last 10 years in climate zone 4 and 5 in the province of Quebec, Canada. The end result of those experiments was a thermal efficient unheated greenhouse that can enhance the local climate zone by four zones. That experimental greenhouse is located in climate zone 4 and was converted from an old barn. It allowed us to grow many temperate climate fruits which otherwise could not grow in that region such as cherries, apricots, peaches, nectarines, table grapes and even figs. Over the last couple of years we continued our experimental work and started a number of interesting projects with very encouraging results. In this video, I would like to present five of these projects as follows. A simplified solution for the indoor orchard in cold climate. An improved plus four zone unheated greenhouse in zone four. An experimental year round subtropical unheated greenhouse in zone five. A solution for growing figs in the ground in cold climate. And a thermal efficient food wall is a more affordable solution for growing food in a cold climate. Let's see them one by one. As we presented in the previous video, the thermal efficiency of the plus four zone unheated greenhouse comes from two main elements. The insulation and the accumulation of the sun heat provided by the earth berm walls of the greenhouse and the reduction of the heat loss through the greenhouse roof by installing in winter time a transparent ceiling that creates a large volume of insulating air under the roof. An additional characteristic of that greenhouse was the creation of planting shelves on the earth berm walls, which practically doubled the planting area inside the greenhouse. Encouraged by the fruitful results of that greenhouse, we asked ourselves if we could simplify its operation by renouncing to the installation of the transparent ceiling in winter time. So during the winter of 2020-21, we decided to not install the plastic ceiling as we had done in previous years. At the end of winter, the result was surprisingly good. All our temperate climate fruit trees and grapevines passed the winter in perfect condition. They started to bloom, and they produced fruits in abundance all summer and fall, as they did in the previous year. So our conclusion from this experiment was that as long as the greenhouse walls were properly insulated by the earthworms, the temperate climate fruit trees and grapevines could produce very well in climate zone 4, even without the insulating transparent ceiling. However, the more cold sensitive plants such as our fig trees would need adequate additional protection. One of the most asked questions that we received on our previous video was what improvements would you consider for the barn converted plus four zone greenhouse? Here is the answer. We would keep the wood structure, the concrete foundation on the perimeter of the greenhouse, the earth berms with planting shelves on the walls, and the transparent ceiling either of plastic or of a cold protecting fabric if the maximum thermal efficiency of the greenhouse is a major objective. We would also implement at least six important improvements as follows. If the underground water level in the area would allow it, we would lower the greenhouse floor by one, two or even three feet in the ground and use the excavated earth mixed with compost to build the earth berm walls. We would install some insulation on the exterior side of the concrete foundation. We would build a steeper roof slope so to allow the snow to slide down easily off the roof. We would install rainwater collection gutters at the base of the roof. 
we would improve the natural ventilation of the greenhouse by installing large openings at the highest level of the roof and also large windows at the lowest level possible, at least on one wall. Last but not least, we would build the planting shelves in such a way to avoid the direct contact of the earth with the wood structure of the greenhouse. A few weeks after I published the Plus for Zone Greenhouse video, I received a call from a gentleman who said, Hi, my name is Archie. I have an organic farm in Quebec. I saw your video and I would like to build a fruit greenhouse on my property. That was the start of a great cooperation that resulted in a very nice green project. Here are a few images during the construction of that greenhouse. Archie wanted the greenhouse to be located on the south side of an existing shop and as such it came out to be about 49 feet long by 48 feet wide and about 19 feet high. For the same reason we decided the greenhouse floor to be at the grade level. We started by preparing the 4 inch wide wood planks for the roof arches. Archie planned them all to be one inch thick, watered them abundantly, and then place them under some heavy weights so they would dry out in a curved position. We drew the arch curve on an indoor wall of the shop and installed some wood blocks as a template. Then we started to install successive layers of wood planks, glued, clamped and screwed together. As glue we used tie bond too. Once the glue dried out we removed the arch from the template Archie gave it a strength test. We verified its length against the exterior wall of the shop and then we stored it on site. The exact same way Archie and his family manufactured a total of 34 arches. When the concrete foundation was poured, a one and a half polystyrene insulation was installed on the exterior side of the foundation. Then Archie called one of his good friends, Jeff, a very joyful and skillful gentleman, and we started to install the four columns and the main beam of the greenhouse. Once that was done, we installed two pairs of arches, one on each extremity of the greenhouse. We anchored it, each arch to the concrete foundation by a metal bracket, and we made sure that each arch was installed perfectly vertical. After that, we installed all other arches at equal distance, two sets of longitudinal spacers on each side of the greenhouse and also four diagonals to ensure a good cross stability of the roof. Then we installed the wood structure of the south wall. At the bottom part of the walls we installed plywood four feet high on the east and west side and three feet on the south side. Then the plywood was sprayed on the inside with about one inch of polyurethane. Archie opted to cover the greenhouse with double wall polycarbonate sheets. We installed rainwater collection gutters and also large ventilation windows on both sides of the greenhouse. Most importantly, we installed large ventilation traps on the entire length of the greenhouse roof, which can be opened and closed by a manually activated mechanism. As the predominant wind in that area comes from the west side, these roof traps have been installed on the east side of the greenhouse. Then we started to install the planting shelves made of 1 by 6 inch wood planks protected with a plastic liner. Very important aspect here. As I mentioned before, in order to prevent the direct contact between wood and earth, the earth berms must be installed completely separate from the greenhouse wood structure. One possible solution is illustrated in these drawings, where we first install a vertical wood support structure made of one by three planks, which we covered with a geotextile membrane, and then we install the actual planting shelf. Once the greenhouse was finished, the first fruit trees have been planted inside, just before winter came. Encouraged by our successful experiment during the previous winter in the barn converted greenhouse, we decided to not install a transparent ceiling. The winter of 2021-22 in Quebec has been quite cold, 
with minimum temperatures dropping below minus 30 Celsius or minus 22 Fahrenheit, which has been a very good test for the thermal efficiency of this greenhouse. In spring, all the fruit trees came up well from dormancy and started to bloom, bringing lots of joy to everyone around. I would like to congratulate Archie for his vision, determination and admirable work ethic. It has been a sincere pleasure to work together on this project and I wish him and his family to enjoy the fruits of their beautiful indoor orchard for many years to come. Those of you who have seen the previous video may remember our mini greenhouse with Hugel Kultur walls, which I built in our backyard in Montreal. In the spring of 2020, I decided to make some modifications to that mini greenhouse, so to see if a year-round subtropical unheated greenhouse would be possible in our climate zone 5. Essentially, I removed the initial roof and then I built an exterior envelope structure by using some recycled pieces of wood and arches. While doing that, we have planted quite a lot of seeds and seedlings on the interior and exterior planting shelves, and we covered the new exterior structure with a protecting net. Those seeds and seedlings developed into beautiful plants, which offered us an abundance of vegetables all summer long. In fall, I covered the exterior structure with a plastic sheet making sure to leave large openings on the lower part of the front wall and also at the highest level of the rear wall so to provide good ventilation. As the weather started to get colder, I installed inside the greenhouse a few plastic arches and I also dug a trench in the floor. Then I covered the arches with a plastic ceiling and I installed some polystyrene insulation on the front and back walls of this greenhouse. Before winter came, I installed three sheets of tarp on top of the plastic ceiling. I fixed the tarp on the left-hand side and I left it loose on the right-hand side. That allowed me to roll up the right-hand side of the tarp in the morning and give exposure to sunlight during the day and then roll it back down in the afternoon to ensure cold protection during the night. I should mention that I used tarp simply because I had a few sheets available and not because it would have been the best insulating blanket possible. Once all that was done, we brought inside all the cold sensitive plants that we could fit into that space, including some citrus seedlings in the trench and a few planters with Dracaena, which is known to be a subtropical plant. A few days later, we decided to relocate the smaller citrus seedlings into another experimental structure and we brought instead in the trench three young avocado plants that we had grown from seeds. It is worth noting that all these plants were in pots and planters, which was obviously less favorable for overwintering them in a cold environment than if they were planted directly in the ground. Also, we would have loved to plant some seeds on the indoor planting shelves to see how they would perform in wintertime. But unfortunately, that was not possible due to the many plants in that limited space. Soon, winter came with minimum temperatures reaching minus 21 Celsius or minus 6 Fahrenheit, both in January and February. I was going in daily to open and close the tarp cover and to see how the plants were doing. At the beginning of March, I noticed that two of the avocado plants had died, but the third one was still green. Mid-March, we planted some seeds of nasturtium in the planters, and we were curious to see how long it would take them to come up. At the beginning of April, the inside greenhouse was looking quite good. The nasturtium seedlings started to come up, all the citrus seedlings were nice and green. The third avocado plant has lost its leaves, but the trunk remained green. All the Dracaena plants were alive, and we also planted a few very small tomato seedlings on some of the planting shelves.
At the beginning of May, the inside of the greenhouse became even nicer. The nasturtiums were thriving. All the dracaena plants were doing well. The third avocado trunk was still green. All the citrus seedlings were nice and green, and some of them even started to grow new leaves. and the tomato plants were developing nicely. In the next couple of weeks, we placed the planters with the dracaena and nasturtiums at the windows of our house, where they kept flowering all summer and fall. We planted the citrus seedlings in the central part of our garden, planning to graft them when they would grow bigger. And, later in the summer, a very nice surprise. The third avocado plant started to grow a nice branch, and a few more buds were getting ready to grow leaves. The tomato plants remained in the greenhouse and offered us delicious fruits all summer and fall. Now, this was a pretty small and modest experiment, which I put together with some old recycled parts. But for us, it was good enough to become convinced that with some improvements, a year-round subtropical unheated greenhouse in climate zone 5 would be possible. I love figs. And like many other people who live in a cold winter climate, I had to grow them in large pots for a few years, and I kept moving them in and out of the house every fall and spring. During our various greenhouse experiments, I kept trying to search for a simple solution for growing fig trees directly in the ground. The most notable success we obtained with our plus four zone unheated greenhouse in zone four as you can see from these images from October 2020. But last year, we finally had confirmation for a much simple method that would require a significantly smaller structure than a greenhouse, which we like to call a fig house. Here are a few images during the construction of that little project. I chose a place on the south side of a shed and I dug a trench of about 16 inches deep one foot wide and 12 feet long, in which I planted a few young fig trees. I installed some polystyrene and a plastic sheet on a few pieces of wood, and then I used them to build a base around the trench. I also installed a few polystyrene pieces on the shed wall, and then I placed a plastic liner on top. I built a box frame next to the wall from some recycled pieces of PVC pipe and wood, and I installed a plastic mesh, and then I filled that box with earth. I installed a few arches made of some recycled plastic from above the earth box down to the base of the structure, and then some bigger wood arches from about five feet above ground down to the base. I covered the small arches with a UV protected plastic sheet, and then I closed the two sides with the same type of plastic. Similarly, I closed the sides of the wood arches with UV protected plastic and I covered them with another plastic sheet. Winter came with quite a lot of snow, which was sliding down the structure each time there was a sunny day. Towards the end of winter, we were eager to see the result of this experiment. And we soon had the joy to see all the fig plants coming out of dormancy in perfect condition and starting to develop nicely. For us, that was clear proof of the thermal comfort they had in this little structure during the cold season. And they kept growing bigger and bigger all summer long. Quite a lot of people mentioned in their comments they would like to have a greenhouse and grow their own food. But some of them were lacking money, others did not have enough land around their house, while others were wondering if the local zoning would allow them to build a greenhouse on their property. 
Considering those situations, I started building what we like to call a thermal efficient food wall, which actually is a combination between the fig house that I presented earlier and the planting shelves of the plus four zone greenhouse. Here are a few images during the construction of this project. First, I dug a trench of about one foot wide, one foot deep and about 20 feet long. I defined the base of this project by installing on the ground a few recycled metal frames given by a friend. Then I built the wood structure as shown in this image by using one by three by eight feet long wood strips. On about half the height of the rear wall of this structure, I installed some plywood on which I stapled plastic liner on the inside. Then I started building the planting shelves by using one by six wood strips with a plastic liner sitting on some triangular supports. I kept filling up with compost as I was building up each level of the planting shelves up to the top level. Once that was done, I installed a UV protected plastic sheet on top of the planting shelves, which can be rolled up and down to cover plants as necessary. And then I wrapped the entire structure on the two sides, on the front and on the rear, with another UV protected plastic sheet. The front plastic can be rolled all the way up to give access to the planting shelves, or can be turned into a sort of a canopy to protect against rain. Everything was finished just before the end of November, right in time before winter started to bring successive rounds of snow. We planted vegetable seeds around mid-March. The night temperatures have dropped below freezing level quite often in the second half of March and in April, so I added some fabric sheets to the plastic cover of the planting shelves. Around mid-April, our young seedlings started to grow, bringing us quite a lot of joy. And around May, they were giving us delicious organic food. As you can see, such a thermal efficient food wall is not a complex structure. And I would dare to say that with a few modifications, it can be practically built anywhere needed. On any convenient wall of a house, or on any other type of building, along a fence, or even as a fence around the property, on a balcony, or even inside an apartment next to a sunny window. Before ending this video, I would like to add two more thoughts. First, each one of these experiments can be further improved. So if you are interested in any of them, you can use your skills and creativity to adapt it to your local climate and to your specific needs so you and your family can fully benefit from it. And second, as you realize two or three or even more of these experiments can also be combined together in a more complex green project, which will offer multiple functionality and can open a path towards self-sustainability. I wish each one of you best success and enjoyment of your green projects. Thank you for watching.